Okay, shalom friends, a good tevach. Nice to see you, everyone. Okay, hold on tight because, uh, you know, pardon? I know you would imagine that the ray should come before the ayin, but you'll find in Hebrew lettering that with gematria system, which means letters equal numbers, we name the Torahs, Torah Aleph, Beis, etc. But when there's a certain word that's spelled that's not a good word, like Ra, evil, so we flip the letters and the ayin comes before the resh. So it means air, to be awake, to be alive. So ayin resh he. Or instead of ra'av, like a, a famine, we say erev, the evening time. We just flip the letters. So we're in Taira Ayin Reish He, 275 in the first uh, book of Lukut Maran, learning the wisdom of Rabbi Nachman. And we're still in our series of reincarnation, the world to come, the Shiach, you know, the good stuff, the, the light topics in life. And we're going to see everything that's happening in the world right now is, is alive in Lukut Maran, is alive in Rabbi Nachman. There's a piece here that is so profound. Everyone have the spot? Ayin Reish He. It comes after Reish Ayin Dalud. So Rab Nachman says, Da. We're going to speak about the world to come. We're going to speak about what your life looks like after this world. You should all live until 120 years. And Rabbi Nachman says, Da. Now we explain when Rav Nachman says, Da, he doesn't mean just you should know. We have a Kabbalah that he's pulling this Torah down from the highest world of Atsilas, from the highest of the spiritual worlds. And he means, Da means connection, it means relationship, that I want you to take something that's very exalted and I want you to integrate it into your heart. Anytime that we give the, the number, we don't mean the page number, we mean the Torah number. So Rabbi says, Da. Shakal mitzvah u mitzvah sha'aisim. Any time that you do a mitzvah. Mitzvah, of course, means simply one of the 613 mitzvahs of the Torah, 613, I don't like this word, but I'll use it, commandments. But mitzvah also means, like we always bring from the Zayar, connection, tzavtza, one of the 613 ways to connect to Hashem, to bond to Hashem. And like the Zayar also says that mitzvah comes from a language of eaten, of advice. One of the 613 good pieces of advice about how to bond and fuse in with our Creator for eternal bliss and happiness. So anytime you do a mitzvah, you put on tefillin, you keep Shabbos, you say Shema, you redeem your firstborn son, you do a bris mila, you give tzedakah, you refrain from eating unkosher food, you get married, you have children, etc. Put on tzitzes, you deal honestly in business, etc. Says the Rebbe, Nase mimenu ner echad. You make for yourself a candle. When you do a mitzvah, you make a candle. What do you mean? We're learning to right now. I don't see like what the candle is just like popping up in front of my eyes. Where's the candle? Like it's a magic candle that just appears out of uh, nowhere. Is this magic or something? Is this black magic? Where's the candles? Uh, I don't see them. So he means that you create a spiritual candle that is going to guide you. Candles always relate to being, to having light, to having guidance. When something is dark and you don't have a candle, you're in the dark. When you have a candle, you can see. Mitzvahs give you candles. Every mitzvah you do gives you another candle. Says the Rebbe, because when a person passes away, we shall live till 120 years. Im if he's a big neshama, and we know that Klal Yisrael, Amech, Kulam, Tzadikim, all of Klal Yisrael are Tzadikim, big neshamas, like we're speaking about in the Tanya right now, even neshama right from Hashem, 
when a person passes away and that big soul of his comes into heaven, that your soul is precious to Hashem, you have to remember, never forget that your soul is so precious to Hashem. Don't let anybody ever fool you or tell you otherwise. Don't let that voice in your head, ah, you're not so special, you're not this. You are so precious. You're so precious to Hashem. Beyond. You're, you're, you're kings. You're, no, you're royalty, my friends. You're noble, you're royal. The kingdom of princes, priests, and all the women are princesses. That's one of the reasons why they have to know that they don't have to dress in not appropriate ways. Because you're so, you're so important. You're so beautiful just the way you are. You don't have to look for attention. Your soul is perfect. Your soul is beautiful. So when the soul comes up to Shemayim, Azai, you know what happens? Rav Nachman is he's pulling back the paragoid. He's pulling back the curtain. He's going he's gonna to give us like a VIP, you know, what do they call backstage pass. We're about to get Rav Nachman's backstage pass, what's going on in heaven. You ready? You show your badge. Your badge is called your neshama. Don't worry. You show it up there. Reish Pei Beis. You say the code. To open up the slot. Here's one of the, he's going to let you in. Let's see what's going on, says Rav Nachman. Backstage in heaven. As nois nemla liyos mechates begin zayid When you get up to heaven, they give you a pass into a Shem's treasure house and they let you go looking around his treasure house. If you think it's exciting in Fort Knox, you ain't see nothing. Or like that thing from Lord of the Rings. Was the goblins? Who watches over all the gold? Goblins or trolls? Or the dragon. The dragon? But who's the... I thought there was somebody before the dragon. You thought oh, that was... Oh. Oh, there's like they have like a whole system of stuff. It's like you think that's impressive. Yeah, the dragon with all the gold. It's nothing, 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 nothing. Mamish, nothing. All the the Pirates of the Caribbean movies. All that stuff that's in your head of what you think a treasure house is is n- gornish. It's nothing. It's nothing compared to what Hashem has. It's not. It's just to the Shabbos of Just a little bit. Just wet your palate of what's really going on. So you're excited, you go into this thing. I think I saw some movie one time, like, they, they like, they were these big robber, it might have been somehow an Ocean's Eleven type of thing, but they totally like show the guy, and then all of a sudden, he's like, the lights go, doo, doo. they show him like 500 Ferraris, and I'm like, like, yeah, you wanna drive these, you want these? Like, that's nothing, nothing. Hashem's treasure house, and of course, when we're talking about Hashem's treasure house, we're not talking about Ferraris and yachts and gold and Bitcoin. What is that worth? It's nothing. 41000 is good. It's going to be worth a million soon. Don't worry about it. But even a million dollars of Bitcoin is nothing. We're talking about Hashem's treasure house. You know what goes on there? It's the treasure is relationship. So Hashem says after 120 years, let me show you inside. And he takes you into his palace. Treasure is a code word for intimate relationship. And what does Hashem say? Sheyechapes, I want you to go and look. Pay attention, pay attention to that word, sheyechapes. Go and look. V'yikach loy and take for yourself. Ma sheyirtze. Whatever you want. Begin ze amelech yisbolach. Come into the treasure house, take whatever you want, it's yours. After 120 years, Hashem says, come on up. You can come in, you can take whatever you want. And of course, we're not talking about physical stuff. You'll also have physical things in the world to come. But it won't be of value without the context that it's all about a relationship with the one that said, Vahaya Ha'oilam. Without the one that's creating heaven and earth right now. It's not worth anything. I can have all the fancy yachts in the world. If I don't have a relationship with Hashem, what is it worth? Sadly, some of the wealthiest people I know are the most unhealth, unhappy people in the world. You would have thought it would be the opposite. 
the, the, the wealthier you are, you seem to have made it. Why are you so unhappy? Because it's not in the context of a relationship with the creator of the world. So what's the money doing? Ardi Kohelis, King Solomon, the wisest of all men, said that rich people don't sleep very well. They're always worried, like maybe some guy's going to take their money or something. So they sleep with one eye open. It's okay, take, you know, who's my real friends? I don't know anymore. Who knows anymore? What is that? Is that a life? Is that a happy life? And then forget about it with the, with the, the, the inheritance for the kids and the, everyone's fighting. Not everybody, but a lot. Hashem says, I've got big treasures, but the biggest treasure is going to be a relationship with the master of the world. We have to know this right now in our life. There's only one caveat, my friends. Hashem says, come into my inner sanctum and you could take anything you want. And take means there's different types of relationships. I'm opening myself, Kaviyachal, Hashem is saying, to reveal secrets to you. Whatever you want, it's now, you can access it. We find this also in a healthy relationship, a husband and wife, when things are really going well, or two people are dating and it's going well, one party will become vulnerable and so to speak, open up their treasure chest and say, I just want to, whatever you want, I want to share that with you. That's the real treasures. I'm, I'm, I'm showing you my treasure chest. Please come and I, I want to share things with you. I, wanna, I want to reveal things to you. When a relationship is not going well, there's, there's a closing off, there's a hiding from each other. When a relationship is open and it's done in a healthy way, there's a feeling of I just want to express my treasures. I want to share them with you and I want you to share them with me. But you ready for the caveat, my friends? And then the Rebbe says, That's the purpose of the whole pleasure of the world to come. It's not that you're going to have a bunch of Ferraris. It's that you're going to have the greatest relationship with Hashem forever. The treasures. And He's going to say anything you want. Come and experience those pleasures. But the caveat is the following. Ulechipus tzrichenerez. When you want to search something out, you might be in a treasure house, but if the lights are off, how are you going to see anything? When it comes to searching, you need lights, you need candles. Hashem says, the world to come, I'm going to take you into my treasure house. But if you don't have any light on, how are you going to find anything? Only from the mitzvahs do you get the lights, you get the candles. And those candles are going to all of a sudden let you see what's really going on there. If I don't have the candles, I don't have anything. It's sad, it's dark. It's dark, God forbid. Every time you do a mitzvah, you're making candles. So this is not, this is not like magic stuff. This is you're creating real candles which represent light, which represent clarity, the ability to see what's really meaningful. And when you come to Shemayim, up to heaven, Hashem says, I have all these treasures called me. Now you could find them. You could seek them out because you could see up there. You need the candles. Does this somehow seem familiar to you, the idea of searching with candles? Something should be coming up right now. Pesach, Passover, right? We search out with candles. Do you know how we learn about why you should use a candle for searching? The Gemara says in Psachim Daf Zayin Amid Beis, it's trying to find a source for searching with candles. Interesting. Why not use sunlight? Why not use moonlight? Candles. The verse, the Gemara quotes a verse from Tsefania, the prophet Tsefania, Aleph Yud Beis, paragraph 1. Verse 12, speaking about the times of Mashiach, Ba'esahi, in that time, Hashem says, Achapes es Yushalayim veneros. I will search out. Hashem is saying, the city of Yushalayim, Ah, Kardu de Shufraya, Chaver, we're in Yushalayim. You know what that means? You should be jumping for joy. The whole world is thinking about Yushalayim. Be so thankful when Yushalayim, Hashem says, I'm going to search out Yushalayim with candles. Why candles? What does it mean? I'm going to search out Yerushalayim with candles. Says the Radak. <laughs> so that all the traders 
all the evil ones are going to be able to be eliminated. I'm going to seek and destroy. I'm going to find the chametz. And I'm going to, I'm going to eliminate them. You can run, but you can't hide. The simple shot in the candles, you can actually see better. When it's bright lights, things get washed out. You ever try to look for chametz with a bright, like a bright uh, mag light? You look, it's like it's too bright. It's too bright. Sometimes I go into my kid's room because half of my svarim are in, the, in their room. So it's night and I take my, my, my mag light. I got a couple of really strong lights, and like uh, flashlights, like tactical flashlights, like a hundred thousand, you know, lumen crazy stuff. So I go in there thinking like, oh, just, you know, the whole thing becomes like daylight and I have a hard time finding the safer I'm looking for. It's too strong. It's too powerful. When you go though with a little bit of light, you go in there with a candle, you could see much more clearly. What it means is when you're looking with candlelight, the details are more delineated. So Hashem is saying that in the end of days, I'm gonna find the wicked ones. I'm gonna, it's not, they're not gonna be whitewashed. I'm gonna be able to delineate every single bit of filthy, disgusting treachery that they did. And I'm gonna, gonna be able to delineate their, their, their treason. I'm going to see it, I'm gonna be able to seek it out. That's what the prophet is talking about. And then the Gemara says, Nair, it says Veneros. Why do we learn, why candles? So candles are compared to another place that talks about candles. I'm reading the Gemara in Pesach, Dichsiv Nair Hashem Nishmas Adam. King Solomon says that God has a candle and it's called the soul of man. Nair Hashem, God has a candle and it's called the soul of man. And with that, Chayfes, same language, Chayfes, Chipus, search Kol Chadre Button. With that candle, I could seek out all the internal things that are happening inside of you. Simple meaning, according to Metsudas David. With a candle, you could see things that are in the dark. Hashem says, with the candle of your soul, I'm going to see all of your inner thoughts and the things that weren't so kosher and your own soul, I'm going to be able to tell all the things you were thinking about. Your own soul is going to provide light to all those places where there was things going on that weren't so kosher. So Rabbi Nachman is explaining in the end of days is going to be the seeking out of candles, of lights. It's going to eliminate the wickedness. And the greatest candle you have is the candle of your soul, says Rabbi Nachman. Where do you get these candles? When you're doing mitzvahs, your neshama is getting brighter and brighter. Your neshama is getting very, very bright. Your neshama, when it means that you're going to be seeking out candles, it means that when you come into the world to come, if your neshama has been lit up, you're going to be able to see in Hashem's treasure house. The chin is ner mitzvah. The eitzel ela haneris mechapeses haneshama acher istalkus begin zayid the malka. After 120 years, we're going to be using these mitzvahs. We're going to be using the candles of our soul to seek out all this relationship. And if we did the mitzvahs, we're going to have the light to see what the, where the real relationship is at. But chas v'shalom, a person wasn't doing mitzvahs. He was lost. He got distracted by this world. So, how's he gonna see up there? How's he gonna see? But I was a good guy, Rabbi, you know? I just didn't believe in God, and I did a, you know, I did, a, I did like some immoral things, but like, I was more or less, I was okay. I didn't kill anybody. I didn't do adultery. What about mitzvahs? What about mitzvahs? Hashem Echad, Shabbos. Sitzes, film. How are you gonna see? How are you gonna see? Zebuchinus the Mason Chavshi. This is crazy. Watch this. It says that people who pass away are called Chavshi mina mitzvahs. Chavshi. What does it mean, Chavshi? What do we? Freedom, right? Chavshi. If you have a you know break, what do we call like break time? Chofe, ah, I need a chofe. 
So people generally think a break means like, oh, hit the beach, pina coladas, you know, I'm out of here. The guys say, oh, break time, see you later, God, close the Gemaras, off to the beach, what happens in Tel Aviv stays in Tel Aviv, chas As if God somehow is like, so mesim chafshi, it means that you're free from mitzvahs. In a certain way, you're right. You can't do mitzvahs anymore. You're, you're bechofesh of mitzvahs. Because can you do mitzvahs up there? You can't do any more mitzvahs. That's why we always tell over from the Vilna Goyim. The Gra was on his deathbed and he was looking at his tzitzis and he was crying. And they said, Rebbe, why are you crying? He said, for one, a kapuk, for a few pennies, a nothing, I could do a mitzvah that's going to give me eternal reward. Candles, lights, eternal. For a few pennies, nothing. But where I'm going, I can't, I can't put on tzitzis. There are no tzitzis up there. I'm chafshi. That's why we always say, people don't realize, what is it we call somebody who passes away? He's nifter. Oh, that's good, Marco. Nifter. A nifter, he's, he passed away. Nifter comes from the word putter. Right, potter? You're exempt. You're potter for mitzvahs up there. And if there's someone that they're just potter for mitzvahs. He's potter now for mitzvahs. He can't do mitzvahs anymore because he's, he's, he's dead. He's not alive anymore. He's dead. Yes, Aram. Some people, you still have to say Kaddish for you. Okay, very good. So that we explained that before. If a person has a legacy, that's the only way to help you. Is if you did mitzvahs in this lifetime, you helped people, that's, that you would have offspring that are that are motivated enough to do mitzvahs for you, then yes, you can move up in the spiritual worlds. But if God forbid a person did the opposite, he, he made people angry at him, and he made the machloikas and, 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 and all sorts of uh, bad vibes with people, so then he, his, what legacy does he have? Your legacy can help you in the world to come, yes. But he himself is nifter, he's pater for mitzvahs, he's chafshi, mesem or chafshi. Chavshi, look at this. Chavshi comes in the same word as chapes. Chapes means to search. The mesim or chavshi, they're potter for mitzvahs. They can't do any more mitzvahs. But what do they have left when they get up there? Only their candles that they're mechapes with, that they're using. Right? We said chipus means to, to search. So mesim chavshi. They're chavshi for mitzvahs because they can't do them up there. But all they have is the mitzvahs they did in this world become their candles that they're mechapes. Same word. Chavshi, free, not to do mitzvahs. Chipus, to search with now the mitzvahs, the candles that you did while you're in this world. Ki a mitzvahs heim nerois. The mitzvahs are your candles. Sha'al yodam achipus. That you're going to search out Hashem. You're going to go into His treasure house and see everything. Kanir la'el. Now Rav Nachman ends, he like... And he, he puts like a, a, a twist on the whole thing. He ends with a bang here. Last line is a, it's like, this, we could spend years just on this last line. Aval yesh tzaddik. There are certain people, tzaddikim, righteous, noble people, shememis atzma b'chayiv. Even when they're alive, they're so to speak, they kill off their lower animal self. Their lower, their evil desires, their, their lower self, their selfish self is killed off, so to speak, that they're already in the world to come while they're in this world. That's why we explain always when a, when a, when a, when a righteous person dies, for him, it, it's explained as he just walks from this room to the next room. It's a very fluid transition because he was already in heaven. He's already there. We said when a, a wicked person dies, we explained it's like pulling thorns out of sheepskin. Because there's a feeling like, oh my goodness, the, he became so intertwined with this world, the soul, that he's, get, he's, he's, he's getting pulled away from it. But when a righteous person dies, it's like plucking a hair out of milk. It's the soul just... Bloop. You like that sound effect? It was, it was never attached to this world. So it's like he already shed the, the lie of this world. He's already living in the true spiritual reality that Hashem is one. This world doesn't lie to him anymore. He sees beyond the lies 
that are all around us, according to the deeper mystical sources, this world is called the world of lies. It's everywhere, my friends. Don't be fooled by it. The Torah is called Torah's Emes. And the lies are very, very deceiving. This 3D chess of lies that the Yetzirah is playing and manipulating us. We have to stay close to the Emes, the Torah. The Torah has the Emes. It's giving us the Emes. The Tzaddik has already shed that lower self. And therefore, he has all the mitzvahs he could still do. But we said, if you already died, then you could already go into Hashem's treasure house. So the tzaddikim, even in this world, they have their candles and they're already in Hashem's treasure house because they already died in this world. That's what the last line means. Look at these words. Even while he's still alive, who mechapes begins the other. He's in his father's treasure house, even in this world. Because the lower part of him, so to speak, died. He's not, he's not a slave to his lower desires. Some people say, oh, Rabbi, you can't smoke on Shabbos. You guys are slaves. So what do I tell the guy? You can't not smoke on Shabbos. You're a slave to smoking. I can choose not to smoke on Shabbos. I happen to not be into smoking. But you can't not smoke on Shabbos. You're a slave to smoking on Shabbos. We conquer that lower self. I'm not out to smoke on Shabbos. That's called not being a slave to your lower self. Rabbi said we should be zaycha even in this world to look and to go into the ginze of it, into the treasure chest of the King Omein. Amen. Amen. A wonderful week, Heaven.